The rural areas of Migori County in Kenya are some of the toughest places in the developing world to survive. There are no jobs, the land is not farmable, and the remoteness of the location cuts it off from the rest of the world. These problems are intensified by people having large families that they have trouble providing for. The outcome is a cycle of poverty. We decided to visit this area after hearing about a local hospital trying to solve these issues by introducing family planning and educating locals on positive reproductive and sexual health practices. But what's truly unique is that they're recruiting men to lead on these matters. Through a partnership with the Kenyan Ministry of Health and a program called FACES, the hospital has received the resources and staff it needs to implement and sustain these programs. Men in this society are the ones to make decisions. For us to achieve the goal is to involve men. Meet Abraham Kipchichir, District Program Coordinator at McCalder Hospital in Migori County. Abraham tells us that traditionally, the responsibility for reproductive and sexual health has fallen completely on women. Introducing the controversial idea to involve men has not been easy. At first, it was difficult because men basically are not really engaged in family issues. While on a tour of the hospital, we meet Caroline, who gave birth to her daughter two days ago and has come in for vaccinations. You gave birth here. Wapi? Jenny. Jenny. Oh, she delivered on the way to the hospital. She didn't reach here. You delivered on the way to the hospital? Yes. Wow. Was she by herself? Will you say it? I'm a pick up. By herself. Wow. How did she cut the umbilical cord? And she was alone. Yeah. And her husband? What happened to him? I'm a pick up. Yeah, uh, he could not help because he doesn't understand anything. So he just watched. Caroline's story proves how women are left alone, not only with childbirth, but also with infant and maternal health. But this is beginning to change as a result of all the new programs being introduced. As we were visiting the hospital, a young couple walked in together. Jeffrey came in with his pregnant wife for a prenatal appointment. He is 24 years old and she's 19. How long have you been married? For at least now we have one year. You guys are the first couple that I've seen here at the facility. Is that different than how your parents uh, brought you up? It's quite different. I don't think so. If they, they accompany each other, they, you know, as we do, I don't think so. It's we want men to feel part of the process, like the way he said it is yeah. like... Out of all the initiatives the hospital asked men to engage in, the staff sees their family planning program as a crucial step in alleviating poverty. Having fewer children means that families are able to provide for them. Abraham wants to show us an example of how this program is working and introduces us to Duncan, his wife Evelyn, and their baby Ellie. Before coming to the hospital, Duncan and Evelyn had never heard of contraception. Living within his means was a thought that appealed to him. Duncan is just one of many men the clinic has reached. The family planning program has increased by 39%. For Abraham, Family planning means providing everyone with a life worth living. If you have a big family, it will be difficult to educate, maybe even only to primary schools, but we want to break that circle. Small family, educate them, feed them, and then the country will grow, and even the world. We were starting to see how improving health issues was helping to alleviate poverty. But Abraham wanted us to understand how the region's limited natural resources make it difficult to earn a living and are ultimately the root of all problems. The soil is not productive agriculturally, and what people around only depend on is mining. The only source of income is the illegal gold mines, where most of the men work for little to nothing, Duncan included. More than half of men around are involved in mining. We were curious to see these mines, and Duncan and Abraham agreed to take us there. When we get out of the car, the sight is shocking. A shanty town with shacks, sprawling dirt roads, and extreme poverty. 
The official operations in the gold mines were shut down in the 1960s after its resources had been depleted. Desperate for any type of income, locals are now illegally mining for whatever gold dust has been left behind. On a good day, a miner can take home $11 to $33, but the majority of the time, they go home with nothing. Duncan has been working here for four years. And what were you doing before? I was an evangelist. He had to take a job in the mines, as his ministry could no longer provide him with a living. Duncan takes us to the entry point at the mine where he works. As soon as we start filming, we lose one of our microphones into the shaft. We make the call that it's too dangerous to continue shooting without any safety arrangements. So we pack up the expensive gear and resort to cell phone cameras. This tunnel goes down 300 feet, where people load the rocks into buckets, and then everyone waits and for like 10 minutes at a time. When the buckets get filled, they get roped back up here, and then uh, half the miners get to keep, the other half belongs to the owner of this mine. While we were at the mines, we found out that the mining lifestyle contributes to yet another issue, HIV. Practicing unsafe sex is common which is a problem in an area with some of the highest rates of HIV in Kenya. That is where we came in and really educated them that know the HIV status, know the safe sex practices. In addition to education, the hospital reduces the spread of HIV through offering voluntary male circumcisions. This simple outpatient procedure reduces HIV infections by 60%. The clinic offers the operation free of charge and does everything in its power to make it accessible. We pick them, bring to the facility, we do the circumcision and take them back to the, to the community. We wanted to talk to someone who was going through the procedure. Right now we're at McCalder Hospital working with Abraham as he is trying to put together a male circumcision. It's a really good cause and a really important thing to do, but it's quite funny because all of the guys are scared to do it. Finally, Abraham finds Jim, who had come in for the operation today. Are you nervous? How do you feel about going in? Uh, I was fearful, but um, now I decided to do it. I believe after this procedure, no sex for six weeks? Yes. Yeah, I know that. You know that? <laughs> <laughs> that one also made me fearful, but <laughs> it was also long for me. It's a long time. It also takes a brave cameraman to cover the procedure. Jared is about to go shoot a male circumcision. The procedure is done under local anesthesia. Are you feeling any pain? The operation takes about 10 minutes. Now the procedure is complete. Good. <laughs> you feel okay? Yeah, I'm okay. So there is no sex. <laughs> <laughs> Even at six weeks, you don't do it because it's, it's low test. You're back from the procedure. Tell me about it. The procedure is not all that long, and also it's not all that painful the way I thought it was. So you would give this a thumbs up to everybody? This is a positive experience. Everyone should come do it? Yeah. yeah I'm now going to. Reach it for long. <laughs> it's <Good>. a <laughs> After our time at the hospital, we were impressed by how they were able to provide relief to the multitude of problems the community is struggling with, with one simple idea. Engage men in all aspects of family planning, maternal, and sexual health. Not only are they changing health practices, they're also changing minds. Asa, vile watu wa zamani walikuwa na kaa uh, ni tafauti. Inamanisha hawa kuwa na shugulika na kwa sababu naona vile venye walikuwa na kaa ni tafauti na sisi. Duncan has embraced the new way of thinking and is now happy to engage in family issues. Uh, ni muhimu tena kwa sababu uh, niko karibu na familia yangu. 